How's it going everybody? Rybrath here today and we are back with our Vancouver Canucks franchise mode and I know boys, I know we've won the Stanley Cup, we're pretty much at the end of this rebuild, but from here on out it will be win the cup or the series is done. So today I'm going to go ahead and go through and kind of make this video a little bit quicker, cut it up for you guys so you don't have to see everything. I'll keep jumping a couple months of regular season simulation and see where we finish. If we don't even make the playoffs, that's where this series ends, unfortunately. Uh, but I don't see that happening. So a little refresher on what the lines are looking like for you guys if you can't remember. Um, it's Panarin, Giroux, Ehlers still up there on the top. Age is starting to be a concern. So, you know, it's kind of a perfect time to end it. So I don't have to worry about this kind of thing. Uh, Delee and Granlin and Besser. Kasha, Pedersen, Furland. And then... Gadjevich, Shore, Pavelski, and you know, this also means that our picks aren't necessarily as valuable to me, like future, I could trade every pick next year, and it might not, actually, it might mean something if we win the cup, but you know, we can just kind of go for broke this year, defensively, we have OEL and Yoel Levy, D'Angelo and Krug, so that's one hell of an offensive second uh, defensive pairing, and then Hutton and Ivan Jekimov's there, and in goal, you know, we had the scare in the offseason, we got Thatcher Demko in goal, he's got his $11 million for eight years, he said he was going to go buy sushi with it, if I can remember correctly, uh, and then we've got Nick Schneider here, a backup, he's listed as an exact backup, but he's a minor league starting goaltender, so that is where we stand, nobody is scratched in the AHL. Uh, we don't really have anybody else that I'd want to call up over uh, Jonah Gadjevich there. I mean, Nathan Dunkley's listed as an other forward. None of these guys. I mean, it's we're thin, boys. We are really thin uh, after we get out, out of the NHL. But I may look to shake it up here at the end of month one or two. I'm going to go ahead and simulate, though, boys. Don't you worry about a thing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take care of that, and I will see you guys at the end of those months. Alright guys, so I thought I'd stop it here, check in with you guys, we are 9-2-0 to start the year, 9-2-0 to start the year, no overtime losses so far, and we'll see how far that actually lasts, but we are tied with the LA Kings, but we have the advantage because of the two overtime losses they have, and Tori Krug is leading the team as far as points, now we've never really had a stud point getter here, I mean Panera in a couple years, and Giroux a little bit, but Besser is playing well, he's got 5 goals in 11 games, 8 points, uh, Giroux playing well, D'Angelo, so that combination of Krug and D'Angelo playing very, very well. As far as minus players, we're looking at Hutton and Ehlers. Hutton, he's not really happy with his ice time. I hope he doesn't get too upset. I mean, he's, his morale is up, so I'm okay with that. And Ehlers, it's early on in the months, so I'm not going to even bother looking at the goalie stats. Uh, but I really don't think we need to make any changes. If we're going to be 9-2-0 and at the end of one... Uh, I'll check back in with you guys at the beginning of December, and then we might make a trade at the end of December, but we'll go pretty much month by month for now. So we'll go ahead, catch up with you guys once we uh, finish this uh, Predators game here, and we start December. All right, guys, so I am back, and as you can see, our record is 9-7-0. and zero. We still have yet to lose in overtime. I believe, yeah, we won in shootouts, and we won in overtime. Uh, Demko is hurt. I believe he got hurt after this... Uh, I think it was after the Senators game, or it might have been after the Leafs game. One of those games, he went out, and you can see we've actually accumulated three losses in his absence. At least three losses, I think. So, you know, he's been playing really, really well this season. I kind of want to check his stats. Uh, and maybe we can keep Isaac Wallen up here, and we are first in the division by a point, And we have a game in hand, so that's very, very nice to see there. Uh, this, this bodes well for maybe us continuing in the future to continue to win Stanley Cups. Maybe we can just go on a seven-year streak, and I'll just keep playing uh, this this franchise mode. All right, so we got Giroux, Krug, Oliver Ekman, Larson. So Krug is actually, I guess, a great pickup uh, in the offseason. Besser playing up on those second-line minutes. He finally grew to what we knew he can be. Now, of course, he's not going to have the same kind of uh, potential that he did would have if I would have waited until, say, November. If I would have started this franchise mode in November or something, he would have had a lot better potential. Uh, but there we go. As far as goalies are concerned, yeah, Thatcher Demko was is is a he's a freaking monster, guys. Like he's a he's a beast. He's a bona fide stud. Now Schneider has been out playing Wallen, but Wallen, you know, that's that's he's not faced a lot of shots. He's not faced the 200 plus shots that Schneider has. So you know what? In Demko's absence, we'll continue to monitor our backup goaltender situation and see who we should send down. Although I'm kind of feeling it's gonna be Wallen who we're gonna send down. But, wait, did the Sabres... The Sabres have Jonathan Druin and Miko Rantanen. Wait, what? The Sabres have Druin and Rantanen? Alright, sorry, that just kind of caught my eye for a second. That was actually pretty interesting there. Uh, but I don't know if I really want to make a trade or not yet, because the team's rolling just fine. 
there's no reason to make a trade unless I've traded for another goaltender and a you know a top goaltender at that. We don't have a lot of cap space either to uh, do this. So let's go ahead and get up to January 1st, which is where I usually make my trades. I'm going to do the scouting assignment, do the simulation, let you know any big storylines that come up, and I'll see you guys if we make a trade. So here we go, guys. We are back here at January 1st of 2025. And yeah, so we were struggling pretty hard. We lost Jonathan DeLean as well. And I believe we went two weeks without without a win. Also, uh, the Oilers snapped our, you know, perfect and overtime uh, streak. So, and the Capitals decided to pile on there as well. And the Penguins there. So, we got Demko back here. Beauvillier is now staying up. I believe I signed him uh, earlier on in the season. Um, and he's staying up. And I'm going to just scratch Gadjevich. I'm not going to completely send him down, but I'm just going to scratch him because Utica, Utica is going to do what they're going to do. Um, but as soon as we got Demko back, we went on a five game winning streak. Uh, we won six of seven. So honestly, if I were to make a trade, I think I just want some more forward depth. Um, maybe just a little bit. I don't know exactly what we would need. I could try and bring in some stud, but then ice time kind of becomes an issue. We'll look at stats. I'll see. I'll make an assessment and I'll show you guys if I do have a trade to make. But yeah, look at Ehlers is still a minus. That's weird. Um, Giroux, Panarin, OEL, and Ehlers, D'Angelo. Then we got Granlin, Krug, Besser, DeLeon, Furland, Shore. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This all makes sense as far as, whoa, Hutton, Beauvillier, Jekimov. So Hutton. Hutton's lines are not doing well. He's been a minus all season. Uh, Beauvillier. Uh, Jekimovs and Hutton Beauvillier has been up here for 10 games. I'm okay with that. Um, where is yeah, Gadjevich was even. He's a he's got he had six points in 36 games, whereas Beauvillier has two. So yeah, he's probably gonna get maybe he's on pace for more points. So as far as goaltending is concerned, though, uh, yeah, Demko Demko's still killing it. Demko is still <laughs> leading the way here. Uh, with home, oh my God, that is, those are, those, that, that's a goaltender that's worth $11 million per season right there. 942 and 168 goal against average. That is, that's abs absurd. Um, so I'm going to go look at the trade block guys, see who's out there. Um, I know this video has been kind of short so far, but you guys aren't seeing anything, you know, you're not missing anything here. So I'll probably bring you guys in for the final month just to see if we can maybe break a record or see if we can win the, be the best team in the NHL. So I'm going to go and look at the trade block. Going to probably trade away this year's first. It doesn't have a lot of value, but we'll see. We'll just see who's out there. So I will see you guys if I have a trade to make. All right, guys. I think I found a trade. I might just have to eat the salary. I'm trying to get them to retain the salary so that I can do this. Uh, and that's why I'm throwing Svedberg in there. Otherwise, the Leafs first would probably get me Slepeshev. Uh He's listed as a second, uh, second line sniper. I think that'll help our goal scoring on the back end there as far as the bottom six guys are concerned. Maybe Joe Pavelski's not quite getting it done. Uh, I mean, he is, he's pretty, he's pretty old, so I don't expect him to be a top, top, top line guy, but, you know, I do expect him to, uh, I need to at least get players that can put up some points as far as what he's doing. He's got 11 points, Shore's got, okay, Furland, yeah, 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 um, and then, you know, a guy like uh, Beauvillier here, possibly, you know, maybe I'll just bump him out of the lineup, or we'll have depth just in case someone gets injured too, plus... He's on a rental deal. I'm giving up a first and a prospect for a guy on a rental deal. Hopefully, they'll take the retained salary. And they really do not want to retain any salary. Let me just see if they'll retain 25%. Well, can they? Can we do that? Still rejected. All right. I think if I don't retain any salary, I won't have to throw in the prospect. He's he's low top six, but uh, Svedberg there. If I throw if I do that, Slepeshev for a first. We'd have to move down Pavelski and Shore and call up Lorenz. Can you guys just, like, just save me the trouble here? Can you guys take, like, 11% of his salary? Can can you guys do that? Tr Jesus, they do... They don't want to... He's, he's not... A, you guys aren't even contending for anything. Why do you not want to... What? Uh, you Your salary cap for one year is really going to hinder you? Trade rejected. Oh, my God. We have to... So we'd have to send down Shore and Pavelski just to get Slepeshev. Bovillier, I guess, could play center, and this would be... Uh, but I, I like the team we got right now. I'm going to scrap that. Never mind. I'm not making a trade. I tried. I looked through it. Nobody's really on the block, and our cap situation is not conducive to uh, to making a trade right now. So, especially having to send down Joe Pavelski and uh, Shore. So, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and get up to the uh, trade deadline here because if they're they might change their trade block i'll check but i'll get up to the trade deadline here and let you guys know what the state of the team's at 
So here we are, guys, here at the trade deadline. We are 43, 15, and 5, and playing quite well. And something I just found out, because Oliver ekman Larson was on again, off again with an injury, uh, is we have a low elite defenseman who is ready to play in the NHL. He's listed as a top six defenseman right now. And wow, Claude Giroux is dropping off. I did not realize he was going to drop off that hard. Still listed as a first line forward, but now he's only an 85. But it's Mikhail Artyukin. We took him in the second round. Low elite, 19 years of age. He's 78. He's a top six prospect. So we've got depth in case somebody gets hurt. We have uh, Gadjevich, who's played in the NHL. Beauvillier here. I could go for another fourth line forward, but I think I'm going to chance it because I don't know if we'll get injured that badly unless, you know, Giroux decides to go ahead and just get hurt because he's, he's old and... His bones are frail and everything. So, although frail bones, Claude Giroux has 60 points in 63 games. So, I probably shouldn't be talking talking uh, too bad about his age. Um, I did... Oh, wow. They're even players. Are you serious? Granlin, D'Angelo, uh, Ekman Larson is... They're all... Jesus, they're such good pluses. But why are Giroux, Panarin, and Ehlers a minus? That's kind of bizarre to me. Anyway... Um, Hutton, Artukin, yeah, Artukin was playing on the top line, their top pairing, because I just hit, I didn't want to deal with it, I hit assistant coach replace player, they put him on top line minutes, he's got two points in nine games, so he's an offensive defenseman, so I wouldn't expect any less, the dude can skate, uh, hopefully he's a good defenseman of the future, if I ever want to pick this one up on my own, or maybe live stream it from here on out, who knows, but goalies here, Thatcher Demko still freaking amazing 11 million dollars totally worth it i kept wallen up here because he was performing better than uh, schneider and in the games played he certainly has uh played better than schneider has uh in his time so i decided to keep him up so here we go that is what we're looking at as far as players i mean defenseman d'angelo is our leading defenseman oliver ekman larson is 41 and 54 so you know truth be told he's probably the better offensive defenseman as far as points are concerned he probably would be higher if you translate that into points per game but as far as the standings we are 10 points clear of the sharks with the same amount of games played for the top of the division there i'm not even going to look at um at you know league standings until you know we get closer here to the end of the season we'll go for these these last five games we'll go ahead simulate up to them here <coughs> excuse me boys sorry about that one there we go, 5-3 win against the Hurricanes. We beat the Blackhawks, who have actually beaten us a couple times. We lose in a shootout again, so our second meeting with Pittsburgh, we lose in another shootout. We beat Nashville in a high-scoring game. In a low-scoring game, we lose to Dallas. So, scouting assignment, Mart uh, Mikhail Artukin has not liked his recent performance, but that's no big deal because he's on the bench. I might send him down, but he'll get even more upset because of his send-down. Back-to-back 2-1 losses, but we follow it right up with a 3-0 shutout win, a 3-2 win over Druin and uh, Rantanen and the Sabres. 4-3 win over the Columbus Blue Jackets there, a 5-2 win over the Arizona Coyotes. We lose to the Winnipeg Jets, though. We have 50 wins. We'd probably need to win out here if we're going to have any chance of breaking the 60-win mark, and that would be nuts. Uh, but as far as scouting assignment, Russia, defenseman for a week. Why not? Just get it done. Calgary, we lose. Wow, we are not – we are – timeout. We are not playing well. We are sliding into the playoffs. I hit – okay, I was going to say, if we, if we simulate this Vegas Golden Knights game, I'm going to be upset. Um, now, we have clinched the Western Conference. We've already clinched the Western Conference – uh, I think Giroux is really cooling off, so, you know, I'm going to hit best lines here and see if they want to put, like, uh... no, it's still Giroux up there, but they did bench um, Beauvillier, but I'm going to play Beauvillier because I think I think he's played well. So, and as far as defensemen, yeah, Jekimovs, Krug, D'Angelo, Hutton's now, okay, so wait, they had, they had Krug there to start the season, but he's come back down to earth. Uh, he's also 33, so he may be dropping off, so this may be the only realistic year we have to win the cup again. Uh, we could do it. I still think we've got the team to do it, but we are aging and we don't really have a lot of superstars in the pipeline. You guys can blame me for that, but I was just kind of going for here as the end of the end of uh, end of the series. So seven two win over the Vegas Golden Knights. Scouting trip. Uh, I should really just let the scout do what he wants now. Uh, forwards for two weeks in Liga. Why not? And against we wow we destroyed the Colorado Avalanche. They have a lot of defense, by the way. I checked their trade block. They got a lot of defensemen. 3-0 win there against the um, Wild and a 2-0 win. So back-to-back shoutouts. We lose to the Ducks and we lose to the Ducks. But we do finish 54-21-7. and Beauvillier is loving his ice time. Um, we have 115. Is that not... Hey, and Utica has qualified for the playoffs. I didn't even think they were going to come close. But we have 115 points. Where does that put us in the entire league? 
behind the Carolina Hurricanes, who apparently are dirty this year with 119 points. So we were close. Didn't win the President's Trophy this year, but that's okay. Uh, well, let's see who we will be taking on in round number one of the playoffs. The regular season has ended. So is the AHL regular season. And it's the St. Louis Blues, boys. Let's go ahead and do a quick season recap of uh, the stats. So Giroux had 74 and 82. We had Panarin with 65 and 82. Granlund was the next highest guy. So it looks like, uh, what, where is he? Nikolai Ehlers did not have that great of a year. That's a pretty poor year for a guy like Nikolai Ehlers. Uh, I'll, and actually, he had more points on the power play. D'Angelo had a lot of points on the power play. So that's probably where he got a lot of his points. DeLeon did well for us. Krug, not too bad. I mean, we had a had what? Three defensemen? Three, yeah, three defensemen. Wow, look at Oliver ekman Larson, boys. That is nuts. 58 and 73. Kind of carry that to like 65 and 82 maybe i don't know i can't do that math quickly uh but as far as goaltenders yeah all all hell all hell thatcher demko we are all demko's disciples boys 171 goal against average 940 save percentage and 40 wins in 56 games played that's just nuts i'm sorry but that is just literally insane there's no doubt in my mind that he will be the number one goaltender and will bring home the vesna entire league sagan did lead the entire league uh th then we have kucherov jacob forsbaka carlson uh, i drafted he was drafted in 2015 second round in what all right uh colin white jonathan drew in on the sabers ricard raquel skinner tarasenko barkov eric carlson still killing it at 34 man oh man oh man and Giroux up there as well didn't even have to scroll scroll for Giroux. As far as goals scored, Tyler Sagan, White, Forsbaka, Carlson, Tavares, Skinner all hit the 40 goal mark. Nobody hit the 50 goal mark, but that's okay. <clears throat> and as far as your top defenseman, we know it's going to be Eric Carlson, but uh, as far as how close, OEL was close, but even if he would have, if he would have had to be at point per game in those nine games he missed, he was the best plus minus, so I guess he helped the team out a lot. He just didn't get a lot of points. Brandstrom, Jesus minus 27 but 57 points so the dude did not care about defense and goaltenders let's go ahead and minimum games 40 i think that is yep 40 there we go wow a really good year for goalies here save percentage though demko up at the top demko up at the top for goal against average as well no 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 doubt about it he played 14 less games than murray and only had five less wins which is nuts he had 14 shutouts this year boys 14 is what is the record for most shutouts in a single season? I got to figure that one out because Demko, all hell, Dr. Demko, boys, all hell. And then rookie skaters, there you go. So it's Dan Hall, uh, Mika Lakinen, and St Stefan Klotz all led the league in points for defensemen. Uh, I'm not even going to bother looking at rookie goalies because I don't care enough. I want to go check out the playoff tree, and I was in the right spot to check out the playoff tree. I just didn't um because we will be taking on the st louis blues i don't know where they finish but we can check that out in the next one boys here's your playoff tree it is abs preds blackhawks kings ducks sharks canucks blues over in the east you have devils rangers hurricanes blue jackets panthers red wings and maple leafs penguins so the east doesn't flow as quite off the tongue as nice as the west but there you go there are your playoffs that's how it's shaping up boys i think we got the team to make another run you guys let me know your thoughts leave a like if you think we can do it subscribe if you want to see some more and i will see you guys in the next one